Look at all these chips scattered everywhere. A few days ago, an actor from the Iris family came. Caused a ruckus for Siobhan. Those chips must have gotten scattered during all the chaos. <laughs> That's a clever metaphor. Uh, that being said, opening a bar in this place, filled with monsters, is quite a feat. Siobhan must have a lot of tricks up her sleeve, right? You'll have to ask her yourself to find out. But I have a feeling she won't budge unless you impress her with an incredible drink. pride. It wouldn't make sense for customers to come here and order drinks they can find anywhere else. That's the mindset I use when I brew my coffee. Uh, <laughs> you're right, Himeko. Well, that's quite a stash. Not sure if it's enough. Stay out of my way. I'm looking for Siobhan. Uh-huh. What's all the commotion about? <sighs> Haven't I made myself clear enough, Miss Amagi? The Dream Jolt hostelry only welcomes guests who want to enjoy a drink to their heart's content. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in your proposal. But you have the talent. You'll attract a huge audience. You're destined for the Iris stage, not for this rundown shack. Come with me. We'll become the talk of Panacone, a shining light into every corner of the dreamscape. Please, Siobhan, I really need you. <sighs> As you see, I'm entertaining my guests. Don't make me repeat myself. Fine. If you don't come along, I'll just sit here and not go anywhere else give me a sparkling drink sweet with extra ice just one moment what's her deal we can't discuss the case with other people hanging around the bar hey can you do that clockwork trick of yours again Yeah, I'm counting on you. You're one of Siobhan's guests, right? What can I do for you? If you're here to convince me to leave, please stop it. I'll never leave until she accepts my proposal. I just don't get why she won't leave this place. This rundown shack with no customers whatsoever. I've seen it. The moment. When Siobhan and I share the stage, the crowd is going wild, applause crashing like waves, the aroma of irises fills the air, a beautiful melody playing, ribbons dancing around us, and the taste is sweeter than honey. I've seen 
That scene countless times in my dreams, and every time, it mesmerizes me. That's why I have to bring her back to that world, no matter what it takes. <sighs> Want to raise a glass, my attentive listener? Let's consider it a toast to my far-fetched dream. She's still not leaving. Maybe I'll have to try again. I just don't get why she won't... It's ridiculous, right? Our paths were never meant to cross, yet I'm still holding on to her. I'm too timid and shy, longing to shine but afraid of stepping into the spotlight. I need her guidance because I'll never be able to do anything alone. You don't know Siobhan's past, and you have no clue how radiant she used to be. Even among the talented Iris family, her skill was unmatched. I know she probably thinks I'm just trying to ride her fame to get ahead, but all I want is for her to reclaim her place. She's still not leaving. Maybe I'll have to try again. I just don't get why she won't leave this place. who forced Siobhan into hiding here, running this pesky bar. It's all their dirty scheming. Ah, I get it now. She's not leaving because she doesn't want to run into them again. I, I can help clear the way for her. I can do her a favor. I'll go back and write a letter to the Dream Master, exposing the crimes committed by the Iris family. Siobhan will definitely appreciate it. Well, talking to you has got me feeling a bit down. My thoughts are swirling, making my mind clear, and bringing tears to my eyes. Maybe I should find a place to reflect on what Siobhan truly means to me. Here's the payment for the drinks. Please, pass it on to her. I'm leaving now. Amaki has left? <sighs> That's good for her. Radiant dreams may be enticing, but they're nothing more than dreams. Her drink is on the house. Please keep the money. When you're ready, go to Gallagher. <laughs> I can tell he's itching to show off his skills. That being said, mixing a drink is way simpler than you'd imagine. Just pick your favorite ingredients, toss them in a glass, mix it up, and it's done. So go ahead, explore the bar and bring me any ingredients you prefer. Nice work, let me take a look. You found some interesting ingredients there. Now take your pick. 
Each drink has its own unique flavor, and the base ingredient sets the tone for the initial taste and the lingering aftertaste. So, which one would you like to use as the base? The original formula is said to be Hanunu's favorite drink. It's sour and bitter, and the bubbles burst in your throat like swallowing rusty chains, evoking thoughts of dungeons and prisons. Now that you've chosen the base, it's time to pick the adjunct, the ingredient that'll create a marvelous chemical reaction with the base. It should give an unforgettable taste without overpowering the main tone. So, what's your choice for the adjunct? The taste is... not very intense, yet evocative. After those despicables sent Mikhail away, I found myself lost in the wilderness of my dreams. They say that even the dirt here oozes with sweetness. <laughs> All I tasted was stoic bitterness. Mikhail. Almost there. Let's pick a decoration. Which style do you prefer? Anything you need, I've got it. Concentric circles. May you always remember where you started. Well, it's done. Here's to you, Trailblazer, with this glass of even the wicked. To the sad truth. <laughs> well done, Gallagher. You're not over the hill yet. <laughs> so are you satisfied? Oh, the flavors. They're way more sophisticated than Soul Glad. The richness and layers of these flavors are a masterpiece, especially with the adjuncts. I can taste the spicy and sour notes with a hint of sweetness. I'm not entirely sure what it all means. Maybe Mr. Gallagher can shed some light on it. <clears throat> well, if you're expecting a profound answer, I'm afraid I'll disappoint you. The imagery it implies is pretty straightforward. It's just a glimpse of what this dream truly tastes like. Nothing more. Does this true taste have anything to do with that, Mikhail? Yeah, that name does sound familiar. When you got knocked out by that masked fool girl, I think I heard someone calling that name. Do you remember? <sighs> I was right about you. You guys seem to know quite a bit. And now there's no reason to hide anything from you anymore. Let's dig deeper into the case. And of course, I'll tell you a story about Mikhail. All right, let's start with what we know based on the clues the family has. It seems that Firefly isn't a local or an invited guest. In other words, she's a stowaway. She managed to fool me at first. My age must be getting the best of me. But here on the planet of festivities, stowaways are a common sight. You're bound to run into one sooner or later. After the incident, the Hounds wasted no time searching for that girl in both the dreamscape and reality. But here's the thing. We only received bad news, and the trickiest kind at that. She simply vanished, leaving no trace in the dreamscape or reality, as if she had never come to Penacony at all. Huh? Does that mean... That's impossible. The problem now is not that she's dead, but that it's as if she had never existed in the first place. Let me be frank. This case, actually, 
is unlike anything the Bloodhound family has dealt with before. Dealt with before? So, death does happen in Panacone, if I understand correctly. You've witnessed it, so there's no need to hide. Even the shiniest city has its dark side. We're all adults here. Surely I don't need to explain too much to you. Confronting the family based on that alone would be naive. Death may occur in sweet dreams. So what? Such events are highly unlikely and only affect a tiny number of people. If you really want to delve deeper into this case, you need to understand the true problem with the family. I guess it's time to tell the story of that Mikhail. You're very perceptive. The Astral Express has received that music box too, right? Do you know the secrets it holds? There's a message. Witness the impossible in the realm of dreams. Find the legacy of the Watchmaker, father of Penacony, and thus the answer to the question, why does life slumber? <laughs> That's the exact wording. Hey, why are you laughing? Wait, did you write it? It's quite poetic. No, but I'm the officer in charge of this case. So how could I not know? I'm sure you must have noticed that this message didn't come from the family. You might have even guessed that the relationship between the family and the watchmaker isn't as close as it seems. That's just our speculation. Actually, it's hard to believe that the father of Panacone and its actual managers are at odds. Now I can assure you that your speculation is absolutely correct. The family has considered the Watchmaker an enemy for a long time, but the Hounds haven't been able to track him down, as he seems to be living only in the characters and stories he created. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why the family allowed the Watchmaker to send out such a ridiculous message to the outside world, inviting you here and causing chaos? So, you want to seize this opportunity to expose the Watchmaker? Well, now you understand why the Oak family authorized the Nameless to assist in the investigation, but kept you in the dark, right? Because the Watchmaker is not the legend of the land of the dreams at all. He's the most shameful stain in the history of Penacone, and he's the root cause of all the anomalies in the dreamscape. You don't get it? Well, I mean... Mikhail, the betrayer of the family, he's the watchmaker. Here we are, Clock Studios Theme Park, the most popular entertainment center in Penacone. Wait, aren't we supposed to be discussing the Watchmaker? I would have expected you to take us to... maybe... a library. Or an archive room of sorts. But an amusement park? The culture of a city reflects its history in the most authentic way. To you, it's a fun place. But to me, it's a prison for the planet's past. You know that Penacone used to be the IPC's prison planet, right? All the prisoners were brought here, helping the Garden of Recollection salvage the leaking memoria from the macro void. The prolonged exposure to high concentrations of memoria caused a unique phenomenon. The dreams of countless prisoners intersected and overlapped, and people started meeting each other in their dreams, living lives that were almost identical to reality. But everything has a price. And sweet dreams are no exception. In the end, the dream world was unable to alleviate the suffering of prisoners in reality. One of the prisoners broke free from the IPC shackles and fought for freedom. He is Hanu, the great leader of Dreamville, the great peacemaker, 
and the faithful companion of the underdogs. History is always written by the winners. However, it's undeniable that Clocky is an animation that draws from Penacone's actual history. These characters not only exist in Dreamville, but also in the distant past. Once you realize this, you'll understand why we're here. There are so many members of the Bloodhound family around here. They just received a lockdown order, supposedly from Sunday himself. Who knows what it's for? What's going on? Why can't any... Huh. <laughs> so many of them. I've never seen anything like this, even when they're tracking down suspects. We don't need to go in. We don't want to draw any unwanted attention inside. We can just talk here. Let's find a quiet spot and continue our conversation. The view here is great, right? We can see everything from here. Including Clocky. If all the characters in the animation are based on characters in reality, then Clocky's counterpart is definitely the Watchmaker. In the animation, he's Hanu's partner and one of the founders of Dreamville. Does that mean the Watchmaker was personally involved in that war and sided with Asdana? It was a monumental war for freedom. Hanunu fought alongside a motley crew of masked fools, nameless, history fictionologists, mourning actors, omen vanguards, even visitors from beyond the sky. In the end, they emerged victorious. Among them was the person who would eventually be known as the Watchmaker. But if you do the math, doesn't that mean the Watchmaker was around for several centuries? I'm not sure, but Mikhail was already the Watchmaker when I met him. So maybe he inherited the title. How old are you now, Mr. Officer? I'm 13. <sighs> no way! Not even close! Hanunu freed the Frontier prison, but peace still eluded him. With limited resources, threats from the outside world, and internal conflicts between major prison districts, the future of Ostana was uncertain. It wasn't until the Watchmaker approached the family with the idea of turning the prison into the planet of festivities that Penacone finally gained its name and glory. Thus, he became known as the father of Penacone. But didn't you say the Watchmaker betrayed the family? And you said you were his companion, so that means you... No. I'm not his companion. But rather one of his many children. But I am indeed a traitor. Not to the family, but to... Mikhail. What did you do? <sighs> I did nothing. And that's the worst betrayal of all. Just like you, I had close companions. We dedicated ourselves to Penacone. But the Oak family... They set us up. Mikhail was too old to protect his children anymore. So we left the family to find our own path. We were branded traitors of the Harmony, even though the true traitors were someone else. While they continue to praise the Watchmaker's name in the world, behind closed doors, they condemn him on a pillar of shame. Nevertheless, we wanted to clear his name. We intended to find the real traitor, the one responsible for all this, and restore Harmony to Penacone. But we failed. Too much time had passed, and the land of the dreams had become deeply corrupted. After countless fruitless pursuits, I gave up. Like a lost dog. The family accepted me and made me an officer, supposedly as a form of forgiveness. 
but it was actually a punishment. Since then, I've been completely cut off from my partners and my past. As for Mikhail, I heard he died in obscurity, in a place where no one could find him. That's when I realized that the Penacone I once knew would never return. We're truly sorry for what happened. But this is not the end of the story, right? Hmm. Apparently, someone has inherited the title of the Watchmaker, and has been secretly working against the family all this time. Unfortunately, after all these years, I have no idea who that person is, or if they're even real. Or just Mikhail's lost soul haunting the dreams. So, do you understand why I'm spilling all this info? Because I believe the girl's death must be connected to the Watchmaker's legacy. And at the end of all these mysteries, we will find the answers we are seeking. If it really is Mikhail's ghost, I want to meet him. If only for the last time. For those who despise me could form a line from here all the way to the entrance of the hotel. But those willing to look me in the eye and hear me out? Let's just say, there won't be many. I've told you all I know is a sign of gratitude. Thank you for listening to this old dog. Bark and all. Hmm? Uh, something just happened at the theme park. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, good luck to all of you. How ironic. What's so different between the stowaways projected by Penacony today and the dream seekers once hailed as pioneers several amber eras ago? Gallagher does have a troubled past, it seems. While Firefly's whereabouts remain a mystery, his stories shed light on our suspicions about the true identity of the Watchmaker, his connection to the family, and the power struggles hidden behind sweet dreams and death. Exactly. Gallagher suggests that the real traitor is someone else, probably within the Oak family. That lines up with what we've gathered so far. Firefly got involved in this mess because of the legacy, and now we're sure that Aventurine's accusations against Acheron are baseless. Uh, you're really into Clocky, huh? He's just a fictional character, not a real person. <laughs> Speaking of which, that Clocky who only reveals himself to you is quite intriguing. It's a shame we've never met him since then. Now that we've confirmed a lot of our suspicions, let's take a moment to think about the clues we have. Send a message to Welt and see how things are going on his end. Are your companions worried about you? They're just checking up on me. Let's get in and get out. Seems they've made some progress. Looks like we're about to enter the depths of Dewlight Pavilion. It's been a smooth ride. Almost too smooth for a heavily guarded mansion. Let's see if there's anyone waiting to greet us.
Something feels off. A grand mansion like this and not a butler or servant in sight. Could it be due to the disruption caused by the emergency? Well, this door is open. Looks like we'll have to investigate ourselves. Let's proceed with caution. Just one moment. White. I've made myself less noticeable. The crew can explain their presence as authorized by the family, but... I can't come up with any excuses for being here. I see. What an interesting technique. golden hour, isn't it? Maybe the heads of the family used that model for discussing important matters. And the footprints here are different from the rest. There are two sets of them. Looks like outsiders might have passed through here not long ago. Can you identify the people who left these footprints? Well... There's a unique pattern here, flamboyant even, and judging by the size, I'd say these were men's shoes. If I'm right, it could be the IPC ambassador, Aventurine. Aventurine. What about the other set? It looks like they were walking side by side as opposed to one behind the other, so the second individual is likely equal in status to Aventurine. The IPC is eager to reclaim Panacone, so their presence here is not unexpected. Stream 4. people in this mansion. They've set up quite a few mimetic guards to patrol this place. Do we still have the upper hand? <laughs> Another journey from the still waters of oblivion. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Data net markers activated. Time for a good old counter attack. A quick convert and awaken. Free will, destined for oblivion. I see through you. Enemy targets detected. Ready for another? Still waters of oblivion. Specimen in sight. I think something bit Many. me. support. Another Enemy journey begins. Net markers activated. Time for a good old counter attack. Dusted for oblivion. A quick divination. Together as one. Commence all me. things from human creations. <laughs> Enemy. Free will, or was it from still waters of oblivion? I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Look, it dropped something. A note. Looks like instructions from the butler for the other servants. Hmm. Seems like the mansion's entire workforce were assigned other tasks before Robin's death. It must have been a big project to require that much manpower. The Charmony Festival, perhaps. 
but no matter what their main priorities are, there should always be someone left at the mansion, right? So you're saying someone deliberately cleared the place out? Yeah, but I don't know why. No one here, either. Since no one's around to entertain us, let's make ourselves at home. Stay close to me so that my white can cover you, too. As soon as I and the rest of the crew arrived in Penacone, Mr. Sunday and Robin showed up to greet us. I remember hearing something unusual in her voice, and now it seems I was right. Robin believed it was because the Harmony had been tampered with somehow. But as far as I know, there aren't many entities capable of interfering with the power of paths. Meaning? If there really is a traitor within the family, that person must hold a high position or possess unimaginable strength. That would explain why Mr. Sunday has been having such difficulty in catching the traitor. This light cone is securely guarded. It must hold some important memories. According to Robin's interview, despite having performed on so many grand stages, her favorite performance was a, a pretend show she put on with her brother when they were just kids. I wonder how their relationship is now. Growing up brings gains, but also losses. Yeah, time is a way of smoothing things out. The beautiful dreams of youth will eventually fade away. information about Robin, Firefly, and the other victims. I don't see any commonalities among them. Looks like the rumors were right. Death does seem to be targeting random victims. And based on Sunday's notes, he's no stranger to death. He's just surprised that it has resurfaced. Seems neither the Dream Master of Penacone nor this old Odie is happy with Sunday's recent performance. They don't seem to care much about death. Instead, they're more concerned about the Charmony Festival and the Watchmaker. Maybe the other family heads don't think death is a big deal. One thing's for sure there's a lot of internal conflict within the family, and everybody has their own agenda. Mr. Sunday has done some serious research on his suspects. This traitor must have been causing trouble for the family for a long time. They all seem to be insiders, but I haven't met any of them. Huh? Wait, these characteristics... What is it? 
No, nothing. Maybe I'm just overthinking things. However, if this traitor really exists, could they be responsible for Firefly and Robin's deaths? Perhaps that's why Sunday is taking this matter so seriously. That's all for now. Nothing more noteworthy. Before coming here, I had all sorts of scenarios in my head about dealing with the family. I did not expect an empty mansion. Watch out. Someone's approaching. I don't think trespassing on forbidden areas is the way to be a guest, Mr. Yang. And... Acheron? The Galaxy Ranger? Our apologies, Mr. Sunday. Uh, nobody came to greet us, so we entered without permission. I hope you can forgive us. But even if there's no one to greet you, you should wait for the host. Don't you agree? Even without the famous Galaxy Ranger. As far as I know, the crew has officially accepted the family's commission. So coming here will be unnecessary for you. On the contrary, that's exactly why we're here. To ask you about the case and gather more information. We don't want any loose ends. Hmm. Well, since you've come with goodwill, I have no reason to show you the door. Rest assured, he hasn't figured out that we went through those documents. While the truth remains a mystery, I'm getting close to it. I assure you that the traitor will soon pay the price. Let's hope justice will prevail soon. I have a question for you, if you don't mind. How did the family come to the conclusion that the murderer was within the family? With all due respect, it's in the IPC's interest to wreak havoc before the Charmony Festival, and the family has every reason to suspect the IPC's involvement. Well, other family heads share the same suspicions as you, but in my opinion, the true murderer would never have drawn as much attention as that ambassador did. Not to mention, I personally shackled him a while ago. However, I'll give you a suggestion regarding your suspicions, Mr. Yang. You should be more cautious of Aventurine. While the wicked can't break through high walls, they can plunge their evil dagger into the heart of the righteous. He's a businessman, not some philanthropist. But right now, he's out there handing out his wealth on the streets. And he went to the Clock Studios theme park all by himself. Who knows what kind of scheme he's cooking up. While the family is dedicated to keeping our guests safe, it might be wise for you to stay alert. You never know what unexpected troubles could arise. According to a Pierpoint hotline tip, there was a major breakthrough in the shocking Ejhazio Aventurine case. The suspect has been arrested. This fraud case has been linked to many departments within the Interastral Peace Corporation and the Intelligentsia Guild, causing a large drain in manpower and resources, resulting in the IPC taking a massive loss. The case's main suspect originates from Sigonia IV and is one of the survivors of the second Kataka Avgin extinction event, who does not carry an interstellar refugee travel permit. As per Strategic Investment Department head Diamond Sentiments, the IPC has appropriately relocated the suspect in the spirit of the Charter and will continue to conduct further investigations as to the motive of the suspect. What pretty eyes. Tell me, do they shine in the dark? Well, if they did, I'd sell them in a heartbeat. You don't know how many people long for your eyes to be closed forever. As a servant, you should not resist your master. Yet... You went and killed that man anyway. 
No lawyer has the audacity to defend you. Perhaps you ought to represent yourself. Not difficult, but definitely pointless. You're pretty confident on your eloquence. Did you also think that when you lied to the Intelligentsia Guild? Ask and you shall receive. You wanted the perfect construction material. All I did was offer a possibility. It was just a small wager. If your luck holds out, the IPC will dig something up from the golden sands of Ejihazo. Maybe even the Sand King's remains. Pity your luck has run out. I'll admit that. What I'm more curious about, though, is why such a grand scheme failed to benefit anyone in the end, including the perpetrator himself. Oh, madam, I already have what I want. To be brought before you for the next high-stakes gamble. Then let's talk about the second gamble. Tell me, what are you prepared to wager this time? My life. <laughs> I bet you won't send me to the gallows. Hmm. What do you want, then? I want your Lenore to meet with me. I have something to say. And then what? I want cash. <laughs> it can't be that simple, can it? It is that simple. Thirty tonbas. The remainder of my... market value. Thirty tonbas. No more, no less. With this money, I'll climb to even greater heights than you. Grasp even more riches than you. <laughs> I wager you won't give me this chance. Which is why you should call him here. Interesting. A pity Diamond won't see you. No one gets to see him. From here on out, I am Diamond's representative, and I will decide on his behalf. You're wrong. Thirty Tonbas. He'll give you that. And much more than that. Wealth. Status. Power. The IPC will give you whatever you want, even what you don't want. Kakavasha. <laughs> A good name, but unfortunately destined to be buried in the dirt. You, though, you deserve to live, to create even more wealth for us. Go, pick the clothes you like, then choose your desired identity. And then, <laughs> use them well, child. May your plans never suffer failure. Life is like a long-term investment. Those who choose correctly, do the correct things, reach the correct outcomes, and show the world their value. People can't always make the right choices in their lives. But luck has always been on my side. I've never lost. Is it because Gyathra blesses me? <laughs> well, if that's the case, she must also be looking upon me right now. My success is inevitable. But... What then? <laughs> Even if I overcome this difficult trial... What would come next? What awaits me after this glorious gamble? An even more glorious one? Will I return triumphant with unending riches after countless successes, or... 
will I encounter failure. Never to return. Dreaming, or have I gone completely insane? Perhaps both. You've forgotten me already. When you were strapped to that electric chair by a mannequin warlord, who was it that gave you the idea? Fine. I may be crazy, but I'm not stupid. Get out of my head, newborn of the Harmony. <laughs> the Harmony? Oh, don't play the fool. Not the first time we've met. No need to be so polite. I'm you, and perhaps even more aware of yourself than you. Of what exactly you want. You're dying. And you still want to drag a bunch of unfortunate fools with you through death's door. That's why you're here, isn't it? <laughs> a grand unveiling. You really think you can pull it off? <laughs> why not? You may have fooled everyone, but you can't fool yourself. I can show you. Before you're entirely gone, I'll be with you for the last stretch of your road. Let's have a heart-to-heart -heart while we walk. What exactly are you? Most people in this world spend their entire lives just to reach one outcome. And I am that outcome. Kakavasha, I am your future. <laughs> First I'm hearing things, and now I'm seeing them. <laughs> Great. Am I going to be elevated into the Harmony's Emanator next? Oh, why are there no guests here? What's that Featherhead doing? Just a Papeshi? No. A child? Miners weren't allowed in Golden Hour. Hey, kid. You okay? Are you lost? What's wrong, mister? You don't look well. <laughs> You're... Eyes. Impossible. Who are you? They're pretty, aren't they? Sis said they're a gift from Mama Funga. Colorful eyes are said to bring good luck. Uh, mister, you have pretty eyes too. Beautiful. Are... Are you alone? Where are your parents? They're in that amusement park. Papa and Mama went in first. 
I'm just about to go look for them. I have to go. Goodbye, mister. Hope you have a good time, too. Those eyes... ...and Mama Thung... No, no, it... ...it can't... There aren't any Avgens left. All or nothing. Ratio's a teeny peacock analogy sounds pleasant. Well, you know how rare it is for me to give you the straight dope. So listen while you can. It's good timing that you mentioned the doctor. I'm especially fond of what you and he have in common. The conspiracies, calculations. Especially the part about the finale, a magnificent act of betrayal. <laughs> oh, when everyone thinks this way, who would even suspect that it was another trap you've meticulously devised? <sighs> Go on, tell me I'm right. You know who you really are, Mr. Cavalier Gambler. Uptight, sober, cautious, massive inferiority complex. You want so much, you're still so afraid of losing. They only see your big bets, your bravado, the full house, the straight blush. They don't know the other hand is below the table, clutching your chips. For dear life. It's a heck of an act. No wonder the tavern sent you an invite. You're a natural kid. You don't stop at fooling the audience. You fool yourself, too. Well, the best way to prevent others from seeing your true colors is first being able to fool yourself. Of course. I know you all too well. But it's strange. Why did you decline that invitation? You had the chance to embrace elation. Was that not what you most wanted? But you chose the IPC instead. For the preservation? <laughs> I doubt it. Do you even have anything in common with the preservation? Oh, I thought you knew. Didn't you say you had me pegged? We're done. Either stop talking or disappear from my sight. <laughs> That's fine. But who exactly is about to disappear here? Let's 
not going to be me anyway. Goodbye that day. How many catechins were like jackals hot on your heels? I know you won't forget that sound anytime soon. Those shrill cackles. You had to hide right under the noses of those savages. You and Big Sis. Playing dead. Drifting in all that bloody water. Completely ruined that shirt. <laughs> Shame. Wasn't that the last one Dad left behind? It wasn't ruined. I've always kept it. Oh, come on. It's a rag. Not like you can ever wear it. <laughs> now you don't have to hide. You probably won't even deign to get your pretty outfit wet in the rain. Well, your social capital has changed, after all. I've never changed. On the contrary, now you're the one who does the hunting. The last round of hide-and-seek, and you get to be in. You should enjoy it. That child, could he be in here? <laughs> 